Hello, Asuma here with a invention for all of you map makers and redstoners out there. This is a custom timer and what it does is it gives you an output in the form of redstone at a time interval that you specify. So the way that this works is the uh, we take advantage of the new features in 1.4, that being with the custom spawners, and we have this one right here spawning an item of bedrock, and it's going to try and do that every tick, and it spawns it in this location over here, and it spawns it with a custom despawn time, and that one is currently set to 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds it's going to spawn a new one, and I can give you a demonstration of this by walking up to it. You can see it's trying to spawn one every tick, and because I'm picking up the items, uh, it means that it keeps spawning them. So when I'm not picking it up, there's one in range, and that's the maximum amount of these type of entities that is allowed to be in range of the spawner. So that's why there's only one at a time. Um, so in a nutshell, every 10 seconds, a new one is going to be spawned. Now, the way that all this redstone around it works is, um, first of all, this is where we activate it, and it's going to set this piston off here, and that's going to push this bedrock item out of range. It's going to fall down into the lava, but before it even reaches the lava, it's already out of range of the spawner, and it's going to spawn a new one. So then that same signal is going to go through these repeaters, and it's going to fire this piston off twice, and what that piston does is it pushes the item down onto this pressure plate. Now the reason that this fires twice is just in case um, you happen to activate the input at the time that this item right here lands on top of the piston. So if it does land on top of it then it's going to retract and push again so the item is going to end up on the pressure plate. Now when it lands on the pressure plate it starts off this monostable circuit and this isn't going to um, give an output until the item despawns and it turns uh, the torch back on. So at the moment that the item despawns, which is 10 seconds on this, you're going to receive an output here at the output, and that's the timed interval that we I said you could specify is the same one as the item's despawn time. And then the other output here, the other torch, goes back into the piston. So when the new one spawns after that one's despawned, you get an output and then it pushes it back down onto the pressure plate. Now some of you may be thinking that I haven't factored in the time here and that the item spawns, falls down, gets pushed by the piston and then lands on the pressure plate again. But the trick here is that this circuit is activated when the item despawns, so it doesn't matter how long it takes for the item to get to the pressure plate, uh, it's just when it despawns that it activates the output. So you don't have to factor in anything extra there. So let's start this off so you can see it in action. There you go, the item is now on the pressure plate and when it despawns it's going to activate the output over here and also that piston again. And there we go. So all of this is included in a map download and that's not a schematic because these mob cages are dependent on the location or the coordinates where they spawn the item. So if it was a schematic and you imported it into your map then it's not going to um, spawn it in relation to where the mob cage is. Now as well as that I've also um, included all of the information for the mob cage itself and a link to the program that will allow you to create one of these because you're going to have to set it up with the uh, coordinates of where you need to spawn the item, that being just above this block here and also you can then set your own custom despawn time on the item and that being the time of the clock. So you can set that anywhere between one second and five minutes and possibly, I haven't tested it, but in theory it might be possible to set a negative value on the age despawn time of an item and possibly then it could go for over five minutes but I haven't tested that. So the other thing I should tell you is that the range on this, this is activated by the player and that is set up for over 2000 blocks uh, which I can't really show you but if I go all the way back here you can't even see the item that's not loaded, you can see the piston just fired then, you can't see any animations on the mob cage but it basically works at any range that you want. So you want to put this in in your uh, spawn chunks which always stay loaded so then if the player is over a, a thousand or two thousand blocks away as long as you set the range on the mob cage um, then this is going to be activated because it's still in loaded chunks. So that's about it I think I covered everything there um, all the useful information you need is in the description box so thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.